worship him. I got to move that pen. I'm going to knock it off. Amen. God is good. I don't know, but I'm, not, I'm shaking out my hands. Oh, God is so good this morning. I want to welcome you here. Just a quick reminder, next week we will have Evangelist Gary Taylor here. You're not going to want to miss that. Mark your calendars. Bring a friend. Bring a family member. Also, our teenagers, we are gearing up for Winterfest. And we're coming around in March. And so they'll be coming around asking you for sponsorship for our Rockathon. So pray about it. Build in your heart. Sponsor them. Help them out. Um, they're trying to raise their money for their coming. Go on and start praying now for that event. But go on and pray right now that lives are changed now. We're not going to wait till March. We want it now. We came today expecting. And I'm not leaving with nothing else this morning. Amen. Let's go to him in prayer. God is good. Let's go to him. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we thank you for what you've done already this morning, God. We thank you for your work that you did during Sunday school hour, God. Lord, we praise you. We give you glory. Lord, be with everyone out here. Be with our kids in the back. May your spirit fall like never before and come in like a rushing wind. And we don't leave till we are changed, God. Lord, we praise you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise for everything. And in Jesus' name. Worshiping Him. It's all about Him today. It's not about us. We're magnifying the King of Kings. Come all you weary. Come all you thirsty. Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water. Come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners. Come find His mercy. Come to the table. He will say 
but you're so worthy. I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time for sin. Separated, the breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your sight. You made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe. You broke my chains and freed my soul. For the first time, I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of life. Thank you, Jesus, it has won. Then you walked right out again And now death has no sting And life has no end For I have been transformed By the blood of the Lamb Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of life Thank you, Jesus, you to his name. Glory to 
this morning. Aren't you thankful for the blood of Jesus today? Where would you be? Where would we be? You sing it. Tell him thank you.
I'm so thankful for that, the blood of Jesus, for Him coming and shedding His blood to give us salvation, to save us from the sin and the, the bondage of sin that we were under when we were once there. I'm so thankful for that. So thankful for that freedom that we have in Christ, in Him. I'm just, I'm so thankful. It's come time for us to t- take up our prayer requests, and as you pray, we want to remember Lee Dodge, we want to remember Emily Jenkins, David Holland, the Felter family, Carolyn Roberts, Reverend Brian Wilson, Carl Chaplin, Linda Bonnet, and Sarah Freeman. And if you have a prayer request, if you would just make mention of it by the lifting of your hand, the Lord sees and the Lord knows. Let's pray. Father, we're just so thankful for your spirit and your presence that are here so evident here this morning. God, I thank you, Lord. I ask that you would touch, that you would move on these requests, God, the ones that we made mention and those that were mentioned by people lifting their hands. God, you see, Lord, and you know, and I ask that you would move in every situation, Father, and manifest your presence and your glory, Father, so that you would receive the honor for it, Lord God. And we just give you praise and honor for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. good to be in God's house this morning. I feel like I have been to another place and never left the room. It's good to be in God's presence. Good to be with God's people. I don't know about you, but these are those moments you just want to hold on to when we come and celebrate Jesus together. I want to ask you, if you will, stay with me at the end of service. I have something I want to share with you. But Before I do that, I I know you've already heard that next week Evangelist Gary Taylor will be here with us. But we've got today. And we've got this moment. And I want to draw your attention to a passage here in just a moment in Exodus, the 15th chapter. If you'll go there with me, Exodus chapter 15. But before we go there, something you might identify with because I feel the presence of the Lord in this house and man, we've talked about redemption and the music. And isn't that the way God works? He does the radical. He takes people that are really worthless for any job or any situation or vocation. And He equips us. But most importantly, He loves us. Not because of who we are, but because of who He is. That He's a good and faithful God. And He's ever ever the same and unchanging and today I can't help but think about this and I I think you can identify amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch 
like me. I once was lost. <laughs> Never dies when we've been there ten thousand years. Bright shine the Stay right there. Stay with me, Keys. Come on. Let the saints of God lift their voice in praise this morning. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved, that saved. Anybody saved in this house? Saved a wretch like me. Thank God I'm not what I once was. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Would you stand with me all over this house for the reading of the Word of God? Exodus chapter 15. I'm going to read a few passages from this to put it in perspective and in context. Beginning at verse 1. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. Not a possibility. Not when they sing the song I like, but because of who he is and of all of his goodness. When I think of his goodness and all that he's done for me, I can't help but give him praise. I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord. And I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war, and the Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. His chosen captains are also drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. Verse 13. You in your mercy have led forth the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. 
the people will hear and be afraid. Sorrow will take hold of the inhabitants of Philistia. The chiefs of Edom will be dismayed. The mighty men of Moab trembling will take hold of them. And all the inhabitants of Canaan will melt far away. Fear and dread will fall on them by the greatness of your arm. They will be still as a stone till your people pass over, O Lord. Till your people pass over whom you have purchased. Verse 17. You will bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance. Same song, notice the words. You will bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance. In the place, O Lord, which you have made for your own dwelling, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. Verse 18, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord this day. Father, I thank you for this time together, and I come to you in the name above all names, the lovely name of Jesus. I thank you for the anointing that I feel in this service, Lord, that's breaking yokes, and Lord, that's setting minds and hearts free. I praise you, Lord, today for your goodness and for your mercy, and I thank you, Lord, that there's a song that never ends that you have given to us. And I just praise you today for all that you are and for all that you've done. I thank you, Lord, for bringing me to this place in this point in time. God, I thank you for the word that you have given us, Lord, this day. I thank Thank you, Lord, for the songs that have been sung, and I thank you for the praise and the worship of your people. And in these next few moments, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my rock, my strength, and my redeemer. I just ask you, Lord, that you would touch us, lead us, and direct us, Lord. Guide us by your hand. We give you thanks and we give you praise. We honor you. It's in the lovely name of Jesus that we pray. And the church of the living God says, amen, amen. You may be seated. Yeah, you're going to have to stop or I'll keep going. I want to speak to you this morning on the song that never ends. The song that never ends. The soundtrack of life always provides a song. Uh, there are songs of lament. There's a time that we weep and that we cry. There are songs of celebration. It's okay to celebrate in the house of God. I don't care what the postmodern church has come to believe. It's okay to celebrate in the house of God. It's okay to rejoice. Shouting isn't out of order. It's just went out of style for some people. But it's okay to celebrate in the house of the Lord. It's okay to lift high the banner of the Lord Almighty. and lift. It's okay to cry. It's okay to lament. It's okay to celebrate. There are songs of celebration. And then there are songs of hope because we are a people of hope. We don't live as those who have no hope. We don't live as those who have hope in this life only. This life is just a dressing room. I'm not going to say that this life doesn't matter because this life does matter. What you do in this life has great dependency and great pertinence to what happens to you in the next life. But because that I know Jesus Christ and because of, uh, uh, of him meeting me in a little church in Lake City, Arkansas when I was 14 years old, something happened to me that I never got over. Something happened to me that nobody could ever do for me. Something has happened to me that has never grown stale and has never grown old. The song that he's put in my heart has never changed. Why? He is still the God of hope. He's still the God that when I got up from that altar of prayer and repentance that gave me hope that day, he's still the God that gives me hope at this point and this time in my life. There are songs of hope and then there are songs of comfort. There's a time that we need to be comforted. There are people under the sound of my voice today that you're going through things in your life and you're dealing with grief and you're dealing with sorrow and you need comfort today. Oh friend, the Holy Ghost knows how to do all of these things at one time. He knows how to meet with those that celebrate. He knows how to meet with those that lament. He knows how to meet with those that have and need hope. And he knows how to meet with those and comfort those that need comfort in the same setting. But Solomon said it to best. He said, to everything there is a season. Everybody here is in the same service. We're in the same moment in time. But everybody under the sound of my voice is not in the same season of their life. Each season brings with it a song. It happens even in our culture. And I want to make a point here. I'm not just trying to be humorous, but I want you to understand. Even in our culture, uh, every season brings a song. When you turn another year older, it's a time of celebration. 
I know some of you don't think that. I know we live in a culture right now that wants to look younger. I don't look like I did when I was 18. Beyond popular belief, I had a head full of hair. Some days I don't feel like I did when I was 18. I don't need to hear an amen and you don't need to shout me down because I know it's true for you too. But when I turn another year older, it's time to thank God. Because like the Apostle Paul, I live and I breathe and I have my being. We're in a culture that's obsessed with the avoidance of age. But friend, we age. Now you can say amen because it's true. With age comes wisdom. And I said that because that's a time to celebrate. We may not think of such, but at your birthday... Somebody's going to sing a song to you that is fitting. Happy birthday. Not we dread the day you were born. Not we're sorry to see you. Not if I'd have shot you when I want to, I'd be out by now. But happy birthday. It's the song that fits the season. It's the song that fits the celebration. We sing Christmas carols at Christmas. Now, I know such songs can be sung anytime. However, they have a meaning and a more prolific meaning in the season of Christmas. But let me give you for instance, jingle bells doesn't work at a funeral. When they ring those golden bells, works at a funeral. The song fits the season. They have meaning for the season. So we can understand that in the correct season, the right song speaks. Can somebody say amen? That today, some of you came into this house and you're looking and you're searching. Maybe you're hurting. Maybe you've been beat up. Maybe you've you've, you've had some of the trials of your life in the last year. But there have been some songs that have already ministered to you because it's been about Jesus and how he walked into the tomb of sin and he brought you out and how he's the healer and the giver of life. See, uh, the song in the right season ministers. And everyone here is in a season of life. Some are in their youth. Others are middle-aged. And some are elders. And some are going through joyous seasons. And others are dealing with the hardship in life. But my point is that it might be a challenge to sing the same song and feel the same about it. But today may be one of those moments that the song that you've heard doesn't fit your season. We've all been there. But I'm telling you, there's a song that never dies. But all of us are in the same space of time at this moment. It's a new year. We're embarking upon a new season of 2023. And so to some extent, we can all sing this same song that I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. Because I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know that he does. So uh, there is a place that the song fits any season. It's the song of the child of God. And see, the song of the person that knows redemption. Because the song of the redeemed is one that can be sung at any time, at any season, at any place, at any moment. Because you know what? When I go through the trials and the hardship of life, when I face grief and when I face trials and when I face sorrow, I can still sing the song that I'm redeemed. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Because see, my circumstances around me may be differing and they may change all the time. But the salvation that I have have is still rest assured in Jesus Christ who is the same today yesterday and forever now just just wait with me a moment. I know I got excited this morning and, and I'd like to blame it on people but I can't blame it on people 
I, I, I blame it on this. I blame it on the fact that I come into this house and I hear the worship of God's people and the liturgy of them lifting him up in praise and I hear the shouts of praise and I see the tears of joy and I see the tears of sorrow but I hear the songs of Zion and it does something up within me that I just can't get over it, friend. I'm, I'm not here to hold you hostage for the next 20 minutes but I'm here to rejoice with you in the Spirit of God that we come together in the beauty of holiness and in the power of His Spirit. And if you're bored today, something's wrong with you, not me. I'm sorry. Isn't that what they tell? You know, the dating game, that's what they use. You know, it's, it's not you, it's me. No, 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 today... If somebody's trying, and, and this is my point I want to make, if somebody's trying to crimp your style and the spirit of God that lives within you and trying to, to uh, uh, abbreviate and put a damper on your worship and the feeling that you have for Jesus Christ, it's not you, it's them. Now, I don't know where that came from. It could have been my flesh or it might have been divinely inspired. But I'm going to go with it's divinely inspired because today I feel good in my spirit. I don't know how you feel, but I feel good in my spirit. And I thank God that I know the song of redemption because the song of redemption in my life and singing the song of the redeemed has not changed. You say, well, pastor, I can't sing. It doesn't matter if you can literally vocalize from your voice and sing a melody. It's the point that you know Jesus and you can carry the message that I once was lost, but now I'm found. So it's, it's the one that knows the feeling of freedom that only God gives. There's a song that all people can sing. It's a song that all people can know. It's a song that brings hope. It's a song that gives joy. It's a song of praise. It's a song about God. It's a song to God. So look with me just for a moment. In chapter 14 of Exodus... Let me go back just a moment. And I know that it's creeping up on 12 o'clock, but we sang a while before I got up here. And you know I don't preach an hour, and I'm not going to hold you long, but I can't promise you I'll be finished in the next 10 minutes. But I can promise you it'll be less than two hours. But in chapter 14, because I want to show you something here. And some of you need to hear this. If you're going through a tough season of life, just remember the song of the redeemed lives within you. There's a song that never dies. But the other thing is, is I want you to notice something. That in our lives, the turn of a page makes a difference. Just one day can make a difference. Just a few moments can make a difference. So what I'm asserting to you this morning, the point I want to submit to you, is whatever you're going through right now or whatever you're facing right now or whatever you're living with in your life right now, that just at the turn of a page, it could be different. It might be happening in this service. It might happen when you reach the parking lot. It might happen tomorrow. It might happen within this week. But I'm telling you, just be patient because in chapter 14, the children of Israel were afraid. And Pharaoh contemplates in verse 5, what have we done? We've let Israel go and we've lost their services. And what he means is I've lost my servants. I've lost the people that I could beat down. I've lost the people that work cheap. And so Pharaoh takes 600 of his best chariots and the rest of Egypt, and he pursues the children of Israel. And the children of Israel let fear come against them. See, isn't that the way it happens when we see the enemy come and when we see things happen in our life or on the horizon when it looks like chaos, we begin to get fearful? Now, I'm, I'm not trying to preach at you, but I'm going to preach at me. I have a classic trait that I don't need to do. I have a classic trait that is not scriptural. I have a classic trait that I have to fight against, and it's called worry. I know you're not going to amen me because you don't do that. 
sometimes I let fear grip my heart. And most of the time, just like the children of Israel, it's dealing with the what might be. What could happen. And can I just assert to you something here and testify for a moment? Many of those things that I contemplate that could happen, never do. And they're fearful because Pharaoh has brought 600 of his best chariots and then the rest that he could find in Egypt. And Israel lets fear come against them because as the Egyptians approach, the Israelites inquire, there just must not have been enough graves in Egypt, so you brought us out in the wilderness to die. Exodus 14, 11, that's what they state. But here's the thing. At this time and at this place, Israel would not die. You've heard the story. God performs a miracle. They cross the Red Sea with the Egyptians in pursuit. However, the Egyptians are buried in water and the Israelites walk crossly, uh, safe crossly on the other side. Maybe last year you thought the end was near. Maybe even going into the first of this year, you're looking and you still see the same chaos and the same problems looming. And possibly you faced the, an enemy that you thought was insurmountable. But can I assert something to you here for a moment? Right now, at this point in time, here you are today. Hello? No, 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 no. Here you are today. You're still alive. You're still breathing. You still have the ability to give praise and honor unto God. The enemy did not kill you. He did not overtake you. And better than that, he can't bind your spirit. Why? Because Jesus Christ is Lord of your life. So all those things you thought were insurmountable, the God of the impossible has brought you here today and allowed you to sit under the sound of my voice while I tell you that you are here today and the turn of the page makes a difference because the song never dies. Go with me just for a moment. I'm getting to the text. You say, well, pastor, that was a long preface. But in Exodus 15, we see then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke saying, they did what? They sang and they spoke this song to the Lord. It's called the Song of Moses. Better than that, and I'm skipping ahead here for a moment, it's known as the Song of Deliverance. If the church today could get a hold of the term deliverance and live and walk in deliverance, my, 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 how much different we would be. But it's a song of Moses, and in the song of Moses, they celebrate. They celebrate deliverance. Deliverance is the miracle that only God could do, and deliverance is the miracle that only God can do. Deliverance is defined as freedom. It's liberation. But deliverance also means salvation, whether it's salvation from your sins or whether it's salvation from yourself. Some people need to be delivered from self. You realize, now listen to me. Now bear with me just a moment. You have an enemy that is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's the devil. He's your adversary. But the devil gets a lot of credit for things that he don't do that you do. Because you sit around and you contemplate about it and you let your mind run away with you and you think on those things and you let them take hold of you and you let them consume you till they become who you are. And deliverance is the miracle that only God can do. Deliverance is freedom. Deliverance is liberation. So what are you saying? We used to sing this song in Sunday school and in the booster band. Shake off those heavy bands. Somebody needs to shake it off today in the spirit of deliverance and sing the song of Moses. Why? Because I'm telling you, 
Hallelujah. The song never dies. It's the song of the redeemed. And when one needs deliverance, he or she is, needs the assistance of another with power and knowledge above their own. What do you mean? I mean this. There is deliverance that I cannot give myself. There are things I know to do for myself. There's a way I know to walk. There's a way I know to talk. There's a way I know to live. But there are things that I encounter in this life that I by no means can deliver myself. I can't save myself from them. I don't know what tomorrow holds, and I don't know right now where the Lord is already ordering my steps should he tarry his coming, that I'll walk into tomorrow, that deliverance will be by his divine ordination and his divine hand. I don't understand these things, but my point is, is what I'm telling you, is deliverance has to come by the hand of another. Deliverance has to come by the hand of an almighty God. Deliverance has to come by God Jehovah. He is the God that's your healer. You can't heal yourself. You can't touch your broken heart. You can't put your body back in order. You can't even fix your mind. You can talk to people. You can find a counselor. All those things are good, but only God is the ultimate heart fixer, the mind regulator. He's the ultimate physician. He is the great physician. He's the one who's above all. He's the one who's above every principality and every power that comes against your life. So I'm saying this, that there is one who has power and knowledge above you. Thus, you have to have deliverance from one above you, and that is from God Almighty. So thus, deliverance is not to be taken lightly. Deliverance brings you to celebration. Huh. Deliverance brings you to celebration. Why? Because your life has been spared. There's not a person under the sound of my voice that if the enemy could have, which he can't because he doesn't have that power, if he could have killed you, he would have taken you out in your sin. So if you are here and you've been saved long enough to be miserable, you need to rekindle the fact and the song of celebration in your life that your life has been spared. That which the enemy meant to do to conquer you, God brought deliverance. And here's the point. What we need to see here at this moment in the song of Moses is that with the children of Israel at this time, deliverance brings a song of praise for that which God has done. That's what praise is, is it not? We praise Him for who He is first and foremost of all. But we also praise Him and give thanks for that which He has done. Folks, it's, it's not, it, it is not incorrect in this world right now to give thanks unto God. Some want to make it politically incorrect, but I'm telling you, I mentioned this Wednesday night, but there is an innate nature in humanity that when things go wrong, they call out to a creator who is the maker of their life and who is greater than they are. We saw that this past Monday night. I read a statement from the young man's aunt who said, it's only by the prayer, and she mentioned Christ. Where's all the people that harp about that? A lot of them were kneeling on a field. See, listen, let, 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 me, let, me, let me say something here. It's not just a, but we need to thank him for what he's done because I thank and I praise him today because I saw people this week talking about prayer and lifting up Jesus to a world that needs to know Jesus. It didn't happen in a church. It didn't happen uh, where we might think it should happen. But let me tell you something. I had a, a gentleman back a few years ago that was in one of my classes that was actually saved on the parking lot of a bar. I had a church member that was saved in a machine shop working on a Kohler generator. It doesn't always have to happen in the place that we think it should happen. 
It just is going to happen where God is glorified and where he's lifted up. Because where Jesus is lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. Oh, you say... Well, pastor, now I just don't get caught up in all that radical stuff. Well, you should, because God's a radical God. If he thought like you, you'd be God, but he doesn't, thank God. He he doesn't think like me, praise God. I've told you before, you better thank God that I'm not God, because there'd be a lot of people that have been wiped off the face of the earth. Every elementary school teacher I had when I was going through, man, I would have... God knew what he was doing not to give us power. Somebody say amen. Not to give us that power. He has given us power, but not that power. Keys of the kingdom don't work that way. But my point is here, is that the song of praise is that for which God has done. That's what they're doing right here. We give praise for that which God has done. Aren't you thankful? I'm thankful today because I see today, even though we've got several people out, some still doing Christmas things and some that are sick, but I see today in this congregation, I see people that weren't here this time last year. Amen. And not only that, I see people this year that are walking in this congregation that still have the ability to move and have their being that God has touched them and healed them in the last year. Why why can't we praise God? Why can't we honor him? Why can't we give him thanks? Why can't we worship him? I I see people that have went through trauma in the last year, but God has sustained them and kept them for the moment such as this. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm saying this, that the song of deliverance is sometimes praise for which God has done. But the song never dies. Stay with me just a moment. But here's the perspective. Deliverance also brings Hope and purpose. We live as a delivered people. Anybody here been delivered? Yeah. We we live as a delivered people. And, and, And here's the thing. Even with Israel at this time, there would be more enemies to come. And even with us in our lives right now, there'll be more obstacles. There'll be more enemies. There'll be more things we may have to face and fight through. But we still walk in deliverance because we live as a delivered people. I, I, the older I get, I, I've, and, and, and believe it or not, I'm not that old. But the older I get, I have, there's something in my life that, I, I, God has just directed in my thought. I, I'm, I love people. I want to be around people. But my circle and the people that I like to be around and the people I need to be around are not the complainers. I don't need to live around people who profess deliverance but say something else with their mouth. Because, and here's the thing. I I don't understand this. We've got people that can stand up in a church and sing I'll Fly Away and it'll want to bring a tear to your eye. Because it has about that much power and about that much presence. And it's about that believable because you have people that are talking about, yes, I remember when the Lord saved me. But they talk about everybody. And they got a problem with everything that happens in the church. And they don't like the people they sit next to on the pew. But they're delivered and they're going to heaven. No! They they got issues. Uh, They they, they want just therefore and no more. They want just people like them. Everybody is crazy and absurd in their sight. Huh? Do you think there's not several of us that are smart enough to realize that fruit and nuts come to church, but we love them anyway? And you say, well, I don't know who the fruits and nuts are. Two things have got to happen. I've got to get to the next point. But I feel this in my spirit, and you've got to come. But they've always got something to say about everything. And they're supposed to be delivered. And what they have to say is never praiseworthy. It's never anything that you should think on. 
It's always, it's always derogatory. Listen, I'm tired of that stuff. I've discovered the older I get, I don't have to have that in my life. I love people. I speak and I pass with them. I want to love them into heaven. But I also realize that for my spiritual well-being and my spiritual health, that I've got to stay the course. And stay in the course sometimes means that I've got to focus on that I'm a delivered people. And by being a delivered people, I've got to walk in deliverance. And walking in deliverance means this, that he brought me out of that junk and I'm not walking back in it because praise praise God for the purpose that flows from his deliverance because here's what's interesting and see deliverance has purpose It brings purpose. We live as delivered people. And living as delivered people means this. Now we praise God for that which He has done with the song of deliverance. Right? But living as delivered people, it goes a step further. Because go with me just for a moment to verse 17 of this song. It says, You will bring them in and plant them. In the mountain of your inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which you have made, for your own dwelling, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. What's that saying? You're you're preparing a place. We're not there yet, but you will. It's also stating this, that living as delivered people and singing the song of deliverance means I can sing the song of praise for what God has done in the past, but even where I'm at in my life, even if I'm tore up, even if I'm sad, even if I'm messed up, even if i got problems, even if I'm walking through chaos, even if everything's not perfect in my household, I can still sing the song that does not die of deliverance, the song of the redeemed, because I can sing and praise Him for that which He is going to do. Because it says you will bring them in. In other words, praise God for the purpose that flows from his deliverance. He will plant his people is what it says in verse 17. He will lead his people. So sing and praise in a future tense for that which he will do. There is some people right now under the sound of my voice that you don't just need to praise him for the past. You need to sing the song of deliverance and start praising him for what he's going to do in the future because I'm telling you something. Now listen to me. I'm not trying to get up here and tell you there won't be any enemies. I'm not trying to tell you there won't be any obstacles. I'm not trying to tell you there won't be opposition this year. But I'm telling you this. Your latter days are always going to be better than your former days. God is going to lead you and he's going to direct you. What he does not keep you from, by all means, he will keep you through but he is the God who will lead his people so we can give him praise and give him thanks today that we have the perspective that we give him thanks and we honor him and we praise him for that which he will do in the future. Last thing. Now, I'm going to do something that's very church-like here. Get ready to play, but don't play yet. I don't like to take a long time, but man, I feel good in my spirit today. And, and we, we, we get just a few moments in the house of God together. And I know you, you're not going to starve to death. I promise you're going to eat. But in these few moments, it can make an eternal difference. And, and, and in these few moments, let me just be honest with you. I already feel good, so I'm pretty sure that what I've already partaken of in this service, I'm probably going to still be feasting should the Lord Jesus tear his coming Monday and Tuesday. But there's an established truth here. I told you the song never dies. And it's about the song of the redeemed. And it mentions in this passage that I just read to you in verse 17 that he will have an inheritance, the mountain of his inheritance for his people, which he will lead them to. And it says, in the place which you have made. Now, here's something that's, I don't want to call it irony, I want to call it how God's Word is perfect. Man may try to refute it and may try to find flaws, but it's kind of interesting that in Exodus chapter 15, we find one of the first songs, and one of the first songs we encounter in Exodus 15 is the song of Moses, the song of deliverance. Right? Amen. Stay with me just a moment. 
Because I'm telling you, this will make a Presbyterian shout. The Methodists will run the aisle, and the Church of Christ will play the piano. Just give me just a moment. Because this is an amazing thing here. God prepares a dwelling place for His people. And the bigger picture goes beyond just the promised land of Israel. Right? Hey, wait a minute. Right? The bigger picture is beyond just the promised land of Israel because the promised land of Israel is not our final destiny. Heaven, the new heaven and the new earth. The new Jerusalem. Now, now just wait with me here a moment. The, the, so the, the bigger picture goes beyond the promised land. So the first song we see in Exodus 15 is the song of Moses, the song of deliverance. But go with me just for a moment to Revelation chapter 15. This is great. This is God. Revelation 15. Look with me for a moment. Revelation 15 verses 3, beginning there. They sing the song of... <laughs> Imagine this, the redeemed in heaven singing a song of deliverance. They sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, the one slain from the foundation of the world, the one slain for my forgiveness, the one that walked into the tomb of my sin and, and walked out victorious, the one that took the keys of death, hell, and the grave and, 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 and came back alive. They sang the song of the Lamb saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy, for all nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been manifested. Stay with me right here. I'm closing. I promise you I am because there's nothing else to say after this except look at this. We see that there's a song in Exodus 15, a song of deliverance when Israel crosses the Red Sea. But then we see in Revelation chapter 15, the redeemed standing in heaven singing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb about the redemption and how good God is and how He's holy and how He alone is the only one and all nations shall come before and worship Him. And you thought that I just had some title, The Song Never Dies. It doesn't. It began with the children of Israel crossing the Red Sea. We sing it now. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind. But now I see, we sing it now. And we'll keep singing it in the future. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise. We'll still sing as when we first begun. If you're, if you're new with us today and visiting today, I don't always act like this. But I'm serious in my spirit. I, you don't have to say amen. You don't have to say, woo, woe me or whatever. I, but in my spirit right now, man, I feel so good that I don't know whether to give an altar call or whether I just need to run it out of me.
You say, well, you're pausing a minute. I am, because I, I don't know what to do. There's been an anointing in this house this morning, and I can't quite put my finger on what he's doing. But I know he's doing something. And I know the way I feel in my spirit. And I believe there's some people under the sound of my voice right now that you've been so afraid and, and you've been so fearful and, and you've let things keep you in a space so long that you've been afraid of getting free and God is telling you right now, it's time to shake off the chains. It's time to walk out of the grave. It's time to live as a delivered people. It's time to walk as a delivered people. If somebody will just take the step of faith, God is in this place today. there you you think pe people come from a culture that heard this that the rolling stones did it in the 70s and aerosmith did it in the 90s but before they ever did it the pentecostal church was doing it because we were seeing people set free and delivered and we believed in singing and when we talked about you may be poor, we had nothing but a bunch of poor people. And they didn't realize they were poor people because they were rich in the grace and the riches of God. And they believed that they were delivered people. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying right now, somebody needs to stand to their feet. Somebody needs to lift their hands because the Lord is ready at this moment. But you got to be ready. And see, whatever you're needing freedom from right now or whatever's driving you to the back wall that you feel has got you pinned back, if you'll just step out in faith right now, Reach out to the Lord God Almighty. He's here, and He's here to meet you today. You gotta move. You gotta move. You gotta move. You gotta move. today. Oh, come on, step out in freedom. You gotta move. You gotta 